Welcome back. Last week we were in Norway, and this week we're in a completely different part of the world. We're in Tbilisi, Georgia. Throughout this video, we're gonna show you some of the best spots to visit in this beautiful city. Before we dive into this video, we wanted to take the time to address what's going on in the world right now and how it's going to impact our future travel plans and just the world in general. Um, about 48 hours ago, Russia invaded Ukraine, which has had a ripple effect throughout the world, and it's just terrible. We were supposed to be in Georgia for the next two weeks, but with everything being so close by, we've decided that uh, we, we just don't think being here right now would be the best for us. We're gonna be here the next three days, and then we're actually gonna be leaving. This was one of the countries that I was looking the most forward to visiting. Uh, the people are so nice, the food is amazing, and it's supposed to be such a beautiful place. So I'm, I'm definitely sad that we have to leave this part of the world, but we will come back. Hopefully this gets resolved sooner than later. Yeah, hopefully by the time this video comes out, there'll be peace and it won't be war right now for us. And we have to do what we think's best and just be overly cautious. But the next few days, we're gonna be enjoying this beautiful city and seeing what it has to offer. All right, <laughs> more uplifting things. <laughs> yes. First up is the Holy Trinity Church of Tbilisi. The Holy Trinity Church, also known as Samiba, which in Georgian means Trinity, was built between 1995 and 2004, and it's located on Elia Hill. Many of the locals considered it an eyesore. I think it's beautiful and iconic the big gold roof. You can see it from almost anywhere in the city. And uh, what's kind of unique about Tbilisi, it's built in this big valley of mountains. But this church and a couple of the other locations we'll show throughout our time here are located up on hills. So they're great overlooks for the city. Next, we're heading to the famous Georgian sulfur baths. We are in the Kiev Sulfur Baths. So Marissa's in there getting her kisa, and the lady said we couldn't film in there. So I guess we don't get to show you guys what it looks like. There's a little window though. They're taking her skin off. During Makisa, they exfoliate all your skin. They use like a coarse pad and they like go across your body with like soapy water, remove all the excess dead skin. I mean, it seems pretty cool. I don't know if we're at like the most luxurious place, but the price was good. I mean, it was a hundred lira. That included slippers, towels, soaps. You see like the dead skin the on it? Skin. I just finished my pizza. She scrubbed my entire body raw, pretty much. There was so much dead skin that came off. It was kind of gross. Uh, afterwards, I jumped in the cold shower to rinse off all the dead skin, and now I'm back into the sulfur bath to soak and relax for a minute. Uh, just keep in mind, if you're a lady, she will ask you to take off your top, most likely. Um, it was fine. It wasn't uncomfortable or anything. I'm glad I did it, and I would definitely do it again. We just made it into Reich Park, which is located right next to the Peace Bridge. This is a new and very popular park amongst tourists and locals. Also located here is the cable cars to go up to the Narakala Fortress. Sing for me, Sean, sing for me. <laughs> Woo! That's super cool. Are you ready for a masterpiece? <laughs> We're on the Peace Bridge. It links the Old Town to Reich Park. When you're on the bridge, beware of people coming up to you trying to sell you things. And then were, when we first came on the bridge, there was all these guys with these hawks and birds and peacocks. And they started throwing them on me and they were trying to get us to pay them for like a picture opportunity. 
uh, just be prepared that if, if you take the pictures, they're gonna want to be paid. I saw they weren't very like nice to the birds. They like had them tied on ropes, obviously, because they don't want them to fly away. But they just didn't. They seem kind of like aggressive with them. I wouldn't support them, but it's up to you. We just left the Bridge of Peace and we're taking about a five minute walk to the Leaning Clock Tower. Tbilisi is full of really unique and cool buildings and architecture. It's one of the many locations in Tbilisi where you can take some awesome photos. Walking from the Peace Bridge over to the Clock Tower, you uh, go through the Old Town and it's super beautiful area. Right? It's like all old and well preserved. It looks awesome. No, so sleepy. She is. That looks like something out of Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it? Yes. Definitely looks like something out of a movie. I feel like there should be like an old steam engine train coming through here or something like. The street Davi Agmesh Abin Annabelle is uh, where we're staying. It's where our Airbnb is and like this person right here, you know, everybody's gonna come up to you and ask you either for money or eat at their restaurant. They'll try to grab you, pull you in. The street is super awesome. And honestly, if they calm down a little bit, I think it'd be way better. But sometimes it's like a little overpowering, so you just keep walking. A lot of the restaurants in the area offer like a hookah, which they call a shisha. And you can get that, hang out on a patio, listen to music. It's actually a really fun area. So that's good for up and down? Yes. All right, thank you so much. We got our card for two people up and down the funicular and it was 34 lari, so a little less than $12. We're going up there. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you wanna go in the middle? Yeah. I read online that this was an old Soviet amusement park and then it had kind of went out of commission. A couple years ago, somebody came in, completely refurbished it, put in these brand new funiculars and now people can go up there and enjoy it. it. You can see it from anywhere in the city. It's so steep. I thought you were just saying that you were happy we were gonna be on the ground and not in a cable car. Yeah, but this isn't really much different at this point. You're still on the ground. Look how steep it is. It goes tumbling down, it goes tumbling down. <laughs> We made it up. I didn't look up at all. I just stayed into my phone the entire time. It just kept on going. Uh, but we're here. I'm on solid ground now, so we're good. Some people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to rent out the entire Disney park. Why not just come here on a Monday morning? You could bring a group of two for 34 LR. It doesn't look like any of the rides are open, but you could feel like you're in an amusement park by yourself. Who doesn't love some good old chicken nuggets? Uh, with sugar, please. Warmth. Mm. I'm excited to be in hot weather next week. This week. Yeah, I was gonna say, two days. I figured we'd start off our morning healthy. I got a uh, waffle with Nutella in each bubble. I'm excited for that. Uh, a tea and then Sean got a coffee for only $5. The cheapest amusement park prices I've ever seen. So cool. The epitome of health. Uh -huh. So healthy. This would never happen in America. We could rent quads and ride around an amusement park. People are way too irresponsible back home to give them that kind of freedom. People on their little electric handicap scooters are running people over. I can only imagine what happened if you gave a bunch of 13 year olds quads. <laughs> I think one of the most captivating things about this park is that you can walk around the entire park and you just get views of the city. You're up here, I think like 700 meters or maybe a little more than 700 meters in the, in the air and you're looking down over the whole city. It's crazy. I did not realize how big the city was. We did read online that Tbilisi is actually a pretty polluted city. So a lot of days there is like a, a smog over the city almost. I don't think there was a cloud in the sky yesterday and today it's just like all ominous and dreary. It's supposed to be an old Soviet amusement park and you get this like ominous feeling. Kind of.
This park was developed in the 1930s by the Soviet government, and it was once the third most visited theme park in the USSR. In 2001, a Georgian billionaire decided to buy it and revamp it to a 21st century theme park. So now this is what it is today. I thought that was a real person for a second there. Marissa is about to ride an actual ride. I don't think I'm gonna fit. You got it. <laughs> Are you scared to ride this ride, Marissa? <laughs> Terrified there's balloons that's taking me out. <laughs> try to put your feet through that one and your head in that Oh my one. gosh, no! Yeah, try it. Can you see me? Yeah. I cannot contort my body that way. Well, we just finished up walking around the park. Honest opinion, if you're in Tbilisi, I don't see a reason not to come up here. For less than $13, you get spectacular views. You can grab some food. There's a bunch of restaurants around the park. If you want to ride the rides, go for it. Marissa's not doing that for sure, and... I don't know, nobody else is doing it. I wasn't about to test them out. <laughs> Just a quick bolt ride down the road from the theme park and about four lari. And we're here at the Narcala Fortress. This fortress dates all the way back to the fourth millennium BC, legend has it. It was settled by the Kingdom of Iberia. There are archaeological facts that date it back to 400 AD that are like solid concrete proven, but the legend says 4th millennium BC, which is insane. That's so old, it looks old, and it's perched in the perfect spot to look over your kingdom. Sean's so much braver than I am. Yesterday when we were in Reich Park, we were walking by the hot air balloon ride and it was out of order. Uh, but it's back in order today because it is really high in the sky. I expected it to fly maybe like a few feet off the ground. I did not realize that it was a true hot air balloon. <laughs> <laughs> She's up there. <laughs> yeah. You would not catch me doing that at all. The only place I'm going to do that in is Turkey because that's a bucket list item. But anywhere else in the world, nada. That's about the height that I can really handle. Marissa gave up. She said it was too high. She's crawling back down the mountain. Why are there so many human-like mannequins everywhere? We are in Old Town, near the original sulfur baths in Narapella Fortress. Um, this area is so alive, like there's people playing music and it's just a beautiful area to just stroll through and get lost in. I love it. We just got finished up inside the kaleidoscope house. We were inside for like maybe 10 minutes and there was like four different groups of people that came. So it's super busy. We didn't want to take up too much time inside. So we figured we'd come out here and talk. Uh, we're here a little later in the afternoon, but I bet if you come in around 11 to one in the afternoon, the sun is probably like the perfect angle to catch all that stained glass, do like some cool reflections while you're in there. I'd definitely check it out if you're in Tbilisi. We just stopped by the Dry Bridge Market. It's located right on the riverbank in the middle of the city. Uh, it's open every day from 10 to 5, as long as weather's permitting. Uh, you can find antiques, collectibles, books. I read online that if you're gonna buy stuff, they try to jack it up for tourists, but there's room for negotiation. Just be respectful. I wish I could buy all these cameras. I think I'll get these. So this is Italian. This is the old Franks 
for France, and then I'm not sure what this is. I'm gonna ask him, but it just looked really cool. I used to collect a bunch of like old currency, and I don't know what happened to it. I moved a lot, and somehow I got lost along the way. So I'm gonna replenish my my old currency. Maybe get a sword. I can match Marissa. Mine won't be Lord of the Rings, but it may be a old Georgian military sword. Today is our last day in Georgia. Sad to leave. We don't have much on the agenda today, but we're gonna try to get some stuff done. We have to ship some clothes back home, and then also we have to get COVID tested. So we went in the UPS store and it was only express. They wanted to charge 453 US dollars to send our winter clothes home. And that's probably about what they're worth. So we're gonna go to the Georgian Post, which is like a local service, and see if we can ship it that way. So we need to find a box to ship it because if we try to pack it into like three smaller boxes, that it's gonna be like really expensive. So. One box. About two hours later and we finally got everything shipped out. We've had a lot of things to do in Tbilisi. This is definitely one of the things not to do. Don't go and try to ship stuff. It cost about $140 for us to ship the two small boxes home. But we had about four to five hundred dollars worth of stuff in there, so I guess it's worth it. Maybe this? What? This one? Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, oh. No, you keep thank you. For you, thank you. No, no. <laughs> for video. It's for video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. One of the most interesting things to see is the bread being made in Tbilisi. Uh, usually it's like a shati bread. I don't think she was making the shati today, but we did get some fresh ajapuri. And Marissa got to go inside and the lady showed her the inside of the pot and how they were cooking the bread. It was really cool. Mm. It's all buttery, cheesy bread. <laughs> I guess it might be good that we're leaving Georgia because I'll probably gain weight staying here. It's so delicious, so all the bread and butter and cheese. To cross over most of the busy streets in Tbilisi, they have these like underground passageways that you walk under. And uh, inside a lot of them, there's these like shops and performers. They're, they're really cool. A lot of them are full of artwork all over the walls and murals. Well, we just came out of our cooking class and the whole main road of Rustaveli, which is full of six lanes of cars earlier, is like completely shut down. There's police lights, people carrying flags. I think there's probably some more demonstrations for Ukraine going on. And we've got to walk through it to go back to our Airbnb. So let's go see what's going on. Yeah. There are so many people here and it just reminds you of how many people don't want this to happen and how awful this really is. I think that's probably a perfect place to end this week's video. Uh, our hearts go out to everybody in Ukraine and Georgia. Terrible situation and obviously the country of Georgia is standing tall in support of Ukraine. It's a terrible part of their history that they don't want to see repeated around the world and but we'll definitely be back yes this this country this culture everything it's just something that like i feel like not a lot of people especially in america know about and this is a country that you should visit and you should experience in your life if you are into traveling and you want to see the world this country should be high on your list thank you guys for watching thank you so much for watching yeah and if you like this video make sure you subscribe Tell your friends. I don't know how many times I gotta tell you. Follower count's not going up fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a patient person, okay? No, he's not. So <laughs> hit that like button. Yeah, hit that like button. Subscribe. This park was originally developed by the US. For the US? <laughs> this park. <laughs> it's all about the US, huh? <sighs> okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like the queen of your castle? I do. Always a queen. <laughs>